oh, this, vi- I mean, I'm hearing all kinds of shit, man. I'm, it's, it's like, I'm really seeing people lose their fucking minds. I'm seeing people say like, this wasn't, <laughs> you know, and who knows what the hell it is. I mean, you know, people want to say, oh, it's not something that would have come out of, out of nature, that it was some made from a lab somewhere. And then there was, you know, I mean, I know the Chinese government recently have been, has been making the claim, like officially making the claim that it was the U.S. Army that may have introduced this virus into China. Um, I've seen, and again, other people that are on the left who are proposing like, oh, maybe this is, was manufactured so that, you know, vaccine producers and pharmaceutical, excuse me, pharmaceutical companies could make a big buck off of the vaccine. And I'm hearing all this and I'm like, I don't think you've got your finger on the pulse of this as much as you think. I think where I lie in this whole thing is governments and corporations and the the capitalist class, they will take advantage of a crisis in order to further their aims. But that doesn't mean that they've generated the crisis, at least not directly and not with a sense of purpose. I feel like that could be the case with so many of the crises that have emerged in, I don't know, however many decades we've had major world changing events. It's like uh, maybe a maybe somebody somewhere made it happen and it was a conspiracy, but more more likely than not, it's just a bunch of cynical motherfuckers who want to take advantage of the fear and panic that's being partially made for real. Like, it's a real thing. People should be worried and concerned and, and take proper precautions, but also generated by the media. And I think we can have a bit of a nuanced view of this without jumping on this sort of, I don't know, this weird bandwagon that I see people jumping on where it's like, it has to be a conspiracy. I don't, I don't see that in this situation. I think it speaks more to the fact that we are in late capitalism. And this is what happens when we face multiple crises as a result of a globalized economic system built so precariously for so many people. That That's just my two cents of it right now. Uh, I don't want to sound like a shill, but I agree with you 100%, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, and, and, and I say that as as an engineer. So uh, my work as an electrical engineer means that, or how I've always liked to be an electrical engineer, that I work off of the facts first, and then I'll deal with my opinion later. So when I'm building a circuit or I'm doing anything technical, I don't let outside factors like business constraints or how this person feels about it, or that person feels about it. I just deal with the facts as they're generated. Um, and I'm going to tell you exactly how it is and how, it, how this works, how much current is drawn, how much power is drawn, this, that, and other. I, all these different aspects of a, a, of a technical way as far as uh, any project is concerned. Now, it's the same thing with this. I can't deal with supposition, right? It, what you're telling me is that I have to add up all these different suppositions where there's no foundation to it, but somehow I was supposed to interject that into trying to address this in a technical way. And the technical way for this is that, okay, well, I understand that there is a sickness that's becoming pervasive throughout the globe. Because let's face it, it isn't just here in America. I can see if you say, okay, well, it's just here in America and nobody else is having these issues, right? Italy, they're on lockdown. You know, like they suspended travel in the UK, all these different things, you know? So it isn't as if it's happening here in a bubble. But the thing about Americans is that we're so narcissistic. We're so narcissistic over here. We think that the entire world, nothing's happening out there, but it's all about what's happening here. So you would have to believe, and once again, you have to believe this is a global domination that's coming about, especially in the Western world. And then you start to drift into the Illuminati and mm. things of that nature. <laughs> as far as like, okay, well, everybody's just controlling all this and that there's some cabal out there that's meeting up every week and like, ha, 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 ha. We're going to <laughs> take advantage of all these people and, and, and kill them for no other reason. It's like there always has to be an answer. I'll give you a, a, another uh, specific example of what it is um, that, that I'm talking about. A lot of people feel as if slavery was just an ethnic thing. No, it was not. There was a, there was a financial component at a class level that was a portion of it, probably at the foundation of it. I mean, you can maybe argue, and, and I've vacillated on that in my life as to which one was most important. But to remove the the class component from it, then you don't understand exactly why 
racism and white supremacy was utilized in order to take advantage of these people for an economic benefit. All right? So if that's the case back then, then what do you think it is now? Don't think that people are just doing this because they're evil, quote unquote. They're doing this because they like, okay, well, we can make some money off this in the long run. Like the, the people are planning for that. You know, and, and a personal personal aside, a young man came into my into my office the other day and he told me, one of my coworkers, and he said to me, point blank, he said, Well, this might be the perfect time to buy a house because <laughs> A lot of older people are dying from this disease, and I, it, be, I, it would behoove me to go ahead and, and take some money and get a house, right? And he's standing, standing there looking at me, and, and the thing is, like, I was repulsed by it, and it was sickening and disgusting, but I'm also understanding that in this capitalist world, if you are a capitalist, then that is your mindset. There's some benefit to it. So right now, when it comes to this pandemic, there's somebody sitting back, just like you said, who has a capitalist mindset. And they're in a boardroom or they're at home and they're trying to think about, OK, well, how is it that I can be a winner out of all this loss? That, 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 and that's the thing that is, that, that is extended out past the entire economic system. Right. And, and, and of course, we're in late stage capitalism, because I would tell anybody the 1950s, which is, I guess, the, the sweet period quote unquote for Americana and how we feel like this this whole system should run, to be quite honest, it was ten years of prosperity for just white middle class people. Not any non Anglo people, not any not any uh, poor white people, none of these other people, just for what has always been a minority <laughs> in the society. It's just that they just saw an opulent lifestyle than anything that had been seen before and now after. And people are still trying to for some reason, think like that is something that was an anomaly. It was an anomaly. It was a one-time thing. So, and as you said, when you look at this pandemic, for me, it's like, okay, well, if they can still profit from this. I am afraid of quarantines and lockdowns when there's no way that they can profit from it. When water becomes so scarce, all right, which nobody doesn't no, say, nobody even talking about that, not even looking forward, like, okay, we have this problem now. What about other things that there won't be an answer to where a quarantine is not going to change the fact that I don't have water. A quarantine is not going to change the fact that I, I can't grow food. A, a quarantine isn't going to address any of those things. So when you have people who aren't like, Oh, thinking forward about, okay, well, we're going to be doing this in much more grandiose terms in the next few years, much more, much more voluminous problems. And they just see it as, okay, well, I have to, just extend this out for another month or two and then go back to my normal life of watching sports or uh, the, the Housewives or Beverly Hills or whatever it is and, and then Kardashians and all this other thing. So people aren't really talking about, oh, well, even if they believe in it, they aren't looking at it as a long-term problem. They're looking at it as like, okay, well, this is just a blip in the screen. You got to go on back to my life once all this is taken care of. I think I can speak for you and for myself and for court. And there are a lot of people on the left who even do think this is a conspiracy theory. They are continuously worrying about what is happening and what's transpiring. But even the majority of people who do maybe think that this isn't a conspiracy theory, it's a pandemic, but yet still like, okay, well, we'll get past this as we've gotten past everything else. One day, we're going to reach a point where we're not just going to get past it by just sitting idly by and allowing things that transpire around us and not actually playing a part in controlling our own destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'm curious what your thoughts are, because why why is this schism emerging in the left? Why are people, do you think, becoming more gravitated or gravitating towards these mindsets where they think that there is some cabal of whatever that's planning all of these things and... And that th there's a sense that I feel like they, th I feel like people want to believe, or they just believe that there's more control over the situation than there really is. Uh, and I don't, I, I don't know. I guess that gives people a sense of comfort or a sense of uh, like, oh, I know something about the world that makes me feel like I understand. You know, I, I feel more situated in it a little better. I, I, I think. 
I feel like that that the situation is far more out of control than uh, than most people are comfortable acknowledging. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Where do you think that this mindset that there's again this that there are people in control of the situation, even if it is for really evil quote evil ends? You know, where do you think that that comes from? Oh, uh, I think it, and, and I hate to say this, but I think it's because most people don't want to look at the people around them. It's easier to, like, let's say President Trump is now the man in charge, right? And you hear all the time people on the left always point to him as if somehow he just commandeered power in a vacuum, as if he just said, oh, well, after President Barry left, then Trump came in and said, all right, well, now I'm just going to be a president. No, it's millions of people that voted for him. All right. I mean, nobody's dealing dealing with the millions of people that actually went in, agree with them, and those are the ones that voted for them. I think like the general mindset in America is to agree with him, is to say like, oh well, I like what he's doing. Okay. So we don't want to do it. See, that's the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance is to focus on somebody who you don't deal with in your daily life. All right. Yeah. So when you say, okay, well, it's the government and all this stuff. You not dealing with the fact that your brothers, your sisters, your spouse sometimes, or your, you know, your, all your loved ones, your community is totally detached from reality. So it's easy to find all these, or the, all these people out here who are doing all these things because it takes the onus off of the ones that are around us that you don't want to discuss, right? No one wants to discuss the fact that their mother or their father might be the ones that voted Trump in office or very right wing or or believe in these particular things, or you know, are hoarding guns and, and to- toilet paper and all this other stuff, right? We don't want to deal with that. So it's easy just to blame one person that you'll never see. You will never see this person in your life. So it's easy to just make him or her out to be this evil individual. Not to say that they aren't, but I'm saying it's, it's easy to just look at them and not deal with the people around you. Right? If anything, I come from the black community. I come to a, a, a proud... A uh, 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 product of, of uh, uh, South Central Los Angeles in the 1970s and 1980s, right? And I can tell you that I saw a, a, a schism form between me and my community when it came to Obama, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because I because I was honest about the fact like this guy is no good. He's not going to do anything. Of course, because I am a quote unquote doomer, so I'm not going to look to any one individual to fix the things that I know that are global in nature, right? There's no way, even if he was a good person, which he's not, then I knew he wasn't going to address any of these particular issues that we have out here. But I did not look at Obama as being the guy, or Barry, excuse me. I did not look at Barry as being the guy. I looked at the people around me and said, oh, why are you supporting this guy when he's of no use to you? You know, even from an ethnic aspect, even if you want to look at it from just uh, an ethnic aspect, he's still not somebody that is your friend. So why would you invest all this energy in supporting him? So I think that once you've done that, once you've divested yourself of identity politics, all told, even with the people that you love, then that's a much more isolating situation. And I don't think people are willing to put themselves in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So. So you you so you you get on the government, but we're like, hey, well, why aren't you concerned about all of these things before we have the train wreck? Why why aren't you keeping your finger on the pulse of all of these things? Because I know even some guys that I know and, and quote unquote friends, they're really like waiting for this. Excuse my French, waiting for this shit to end so the NBA can start back up. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? They might not like, man, shit. I hope this happens so it doesn't interfere with the playoffs. Yeah. So I have a problem with that. It, regardless of all this other stuff, and maybe it was something that was introduced into into society. It might be some type of biochemical weapon that was that was introduced in China, and that may, it might have been Americans, maybe the Chinese, and all these different opinions as to what it could be. The fact of the matter is that at a grassroots level, we are concerned about it as it needs to be concerned with, right? So. That that that's just my that's I say like that's number one as far as the reason why people are just going towards everything, grasping at straws as to what it, what it could possibly be as far as this pandemic is concerned. That now also 
many of the people on the left, they're capitalists. So they don't even want to deal with the capitalist system, right? There's a difference between being a leftist and you like, because you might be a leftist as far as like, okay, well, you don't have a problem with the LGBTQ community, right? You know, it might be just like a social nature, right? But to be a staunch leftist as far as your economics are concerned, or is that because a lot of people like put a put an adjective to capitalism, right? Vulture capitalism, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. This type of capitalism, that, that uh, uh, c- catastrophic capitalism. But nobody is very rare that you even hear people on the left just say, "No, capitalism is bad." That's a that's a here in, in the United States, right? That that's something that you're not going to get a toehold from too many people when you're talking about things that might be a problem in this particular society. Because if you say capitalism is a problem, then you have to look at how everything is built around you, even stuff in your house, your car, your, your everything. You start questioning it all. And that's something that people don't want to do. And it's the same thing as their family. They don't want to question it because those things are right in front of you. So it's easier to blame even an executive of a multinational corporation for what it is that they do, but not look at not even just our consumer choices, but just being a consumer. All right, that that's that's the thing that they could that they that the society views you as more so than anything else. A consumer, and you have no problem with that. You just want it to be a benign consumerism. You think you can have a multinational corporation and then also be able to procure all these resources that are that are offered to us at to the detriment of not only all the people in the world, but pretty much life itself. No one wants to sit down and start talking about this. So all these things are in that bucket as to why those who are on the left aren't addressing this in a real, I say, cohesive way. They're really looking at the source of the problem and not just this problem in and of itself. 